alternating order. And this happens when we have an election, and each year we do a board reorganization. And uh, I've been uh, thankful, and I'm sure Craig too, to serve as president. Um, and uh, I am very open to anyone else who may want to be president, but uh, just want to thank everybody for putting trust in me in this position. Um, I do the best job I can, and, uh, you know, the money is awesome. So. <laughs> Plus, you get to meet with extra pay. meetings with Dr. Rob. <laughs> extra meetings with Dr. Rob. It's That's a big right. plus. Big plus. So Phone thanks. calls all the time. So with this, we're going to certify our election results. And uh, Dr. Robinson, I'm going to be – this time minute, of year, we hand the kind of the – nominations and all the certifications over to the superintendent and he runs through those items so with that the floor is yours oh you're not going to certify election results is that me okay good i'll take it i can certify. all right no i got it we had i'm pulling that up here we had two candidates for two open seats and it was jolene garber and aaron diggs the incumbent and both of them were elected and uh, Jolene had 523. Aaron got edged out a little bit, 516. So you know, you got, got a close competitor there. Um, our bond issue, thank you very much, Tipton community. It's awesome. Uh, we're going to keep the doors open. Uh, we've got a couple of machines down right now on, on the rooftop. Um, so we're uh, looking forward to that project. And I'll share some more later. But the $2.5 million bond issue, it did pass. Uh, we need a four sevenths vote pass, which is 57.14%. We received 63%, third time's a charm. Thank you, Tipton community. We appreciate that. Certified. All right. I just had to do that. He just wants to put the gavel down on me. All right. All right. So we got new board members. Uh, we're going to swear them in. Less that will swear them in. I'm up here at five. <laughs> 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 Make sure that you got seven votes on you, man. Seven votes. I'm going to move out of play this year. Discharge the duties of school director in and for the Tipton R6 school district? Yes. 
discharge school director and school director and, school director and, director and, and for the Topeka Arts School District, Topeka School District, County of Montauk. Daddy 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 Montauk. Oh, I know you. <laughs> 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 I don't want to say that. I guess so. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> close back <laughs> There you go. Thanks for all you do. That's what you call a close up. <laughs> I just got one to pick. Now I will turn it off. <laughs> okay, keep the meeting moving, and we are going to receive nominations for uh, four offices. You have board president, vice president, secretary, and treasurer. So I will now, at this time, take nominations for board president. President, it will need a someone nominating and a second. I'll make a motion to uh, nominate Clint Miller for board president. Do I have a second? Second. I heard Aaron. <laughs> okay. First by Bo, second by Aaron. Are there any other nominations for board president? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. Seven zero. Nominations for board, board vice president. I nominate Craig Wolf, board vice president. Craig Wolf. Second by Bo. Any other nominations for board vice president? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Thank you. Board secretary. Any nominations for board secretary? I make a motion to uh, nominate uh, Leslie Robbins for board secretary. Second. Second by Patsy. All those in favor of Leslie Rummins for board secretary, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Leslie, you're in again. Do it. You're in again. Well, I told Lisa she was going to be at uh, We could have nominated Dean. He's here. Um, <laughs> board treasurer. <laughs> Take nominations for a board treasurer. Lisa Bixler, do I have a second? Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Ayes have it. Lisa Bixler is back. All right. Now we need to elect a delegate and an alternate for the MSBA meetings, Missouri School Boards Association. You're a delegate, and uh, Clint and I went up to the legislative forum. Yeah. And uh, we learned a lot. Um, it's pretty informative to see a lot of legislators. That's the kind of meetings you might end up being in. We're going to have a regional meeting here next week. Um, we hope any members that want to come in the evening, uh, we'll have dinner, we'll have a presentation, they have an agenda. Uh, the new board office kind of makes it possible. It's big enough. We can hold enough people if they actually sh everyone shows up from the region. It's uh, interesting to hear what other school boards are doing. So um, you would represent us as our delegate representing our school. So And that agenda is pretty cool. I got to be on the... MSBA nominating committee for the uh, Belcher scholarship. So it'll be seniors uh, throughout the state have put together a COVID past and uh, future um, presentation. So it, it'll be um, uh, a combination of MSBA talking about the current issues and Jeff City things and also a presentation uh, by uh, those students or uh, presenter on those student uh, ideas and how they feel COVID-19 impacted their senior years. It'll, it'll be good. It's on the 20th at uh, check-in 545. It'll go about till 8. We're going to do it here. There'll be folks from our region that would include Jeff City, Columbia, Fayette, California, 
uh, several other schools. Those are just some of the ones in Region 6. And with that, I'll make a motion to elect uh, Jolene Garber as a delegate for MSBA. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Aaron. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed nay. Ayes have it. 7 0. I will now turn it back over to the board president. All right, we do need one more delegate. Oh, do you? Oh, we need two? We oh. need two delegates. Delegate, an alternate. Oh, you need an alternate. There we need you go. An alternate delegate as well. I nominate Bo Helms. Bo Helms. He got looped in. There it is. You have a second for Bo? I second that. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Ayes have it. 7 0. Bo Helms. Alternate. Okay. All right, we'll move on to our consent agenda. And uh, remember, if you have any conflicts of interest or nepotism, you'll want to abstain from those items. In my case, I'll be abstaining from item 44408, trace number. I make a motion. a motion to approve the consent agenda. Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Motion by Bo. Second. Second by Aaron, I'm going to abstain from 44408 trace number. All those in favor of the approval of the consent agenda, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Did you vote on that, Craig? Uh, yes, I was looking for something. Else. Motion carries. Leslie? All right, we'll move on to reports. Okay, that's me. Um, first things first, uh, Clint asked me to share a lot of stuff going on in May. So I'll just kind of go down a quick list of things that people wonder about. May 1st is prom. We have a really good DJ there. He keeps doing it to me. Um, May 4th is the high school concert. That's at 7 to 8 p.m. May 12th, it, sorry, May 11th, Mr. Kohler just corrected me here by a text. Thank you, Mr. Kohler. Um, <laughs> May 11th is uh, recording, and they'll send that out on May 13th. That's going to be a virtual or actually re pre recorded. Um, and then we have May 17th, 7 p.m., is kindergarten graduation. And that's going to be in the big gym to allow for social distancing and everyone who wants to attend that. So May 17th. May 20th, is the academic awards is that junior high miss matter no that is high school that's high school that's nhs national, national yeah. honor society student council and the academic awards similar to what we did this fall yep okay and that's at 6 p.m and may 14th i missed one junior high promotion at 6 p.m may 19th mr kohler sorry mr culpepper you have the athletic banquet is that right May 19th, 6 p.m. in the gym. And if I'm wrong on these, just speak up. Uh, I jotted them down Junior here. Junior high promotion, 7 p.m. 7 p.m. Junior high promotion on the 14th. And let's see, I think I missed one. Oh, the big one. Graduation. Can you believe a year is almost over? Whew. May 23rd. Acad uh, sorry, graduation, 3 p.m., Miss Matter? 3 p.m. on a Sunday, and we will be indoors? Yes, sir. We will not set up two locations this time. Correct. All right. Sounds good to me. All right, so that's the stuff happening in May, a whole lot of stuff all at once. All right, so my report. Uh, I, I gave the board some information. Uh, Clint kind of shared that with me. I'll try to be short. Um, I did talk to Ms. Kincaid at our Montauk County um, Health Department this afternoon, uh, just before the board meeting, before she left for the day. Um, she continues to recommend that we wear masks. She said a lot of variants are on the horizon. Uh, she said that in Boone County, they're now experiencing the UK variant. Um, some uh, extent, they have extended the ordinance in Pettis and Boone County, all nearby. Um, some are seeing their rates go up by about 50% or more um, nearby counties. So they, she, her, in her words, she said, uh, unfortunately, the variants are on the horizon and the best thing we can do to avoid hospitalization, getting COVID and then having long haul COVID um, and the new variants in general and reach herd immunity is for people to get um, vaccinated. So that's 
really all I have to say about that and why we're holding firm with continuing with masks and trying to social distance whenever we can. Um, we do have some difficulty with some of our events and people who come in from the outside to the indoors. We don't have that big a problem from what I've seen when visitors come to campus during the day. Um, it's usually during a basketball game or during another indoor event we've had some, you know, we could have, I guess we could have hired bouncers, but we didn't. Um, there, there's some personal choice in that, personal responsibility in that. We recognize that some people are adults and we did not, um, we didn't turn into the mask police. Um, but um, we've been very successful with mitigation thus far. Uh, there's also um, what our uh, music insurance, that's not music like you play, that's Missouri Uniform School Insurance Company Council for uh, those of you not familiar with that in the audience that will broadcast later. Um, there's their um, recommendation as well. I got that uh, this past week. You can kind of see the email that I was sent. Um, you know, music would have to investigate whether there's a causal relationship or any po potential liability on a school that is not following local recommendations um, or CDC guidelines. There are some schools that are stepping out and doing their own thing. Um, said, uh, we believe the burden of proof for a liability claim will be a high hurdle, but the waste, best way for to protect staff, students, and district from any liability is ensuring guidelines are followed. Uh, they also include their stance there that I kind of marked on if you open that up. It said board members and school district employees will have official immunity against most such claims provided, and they put this in bold, provided they comply with applicable government orders whether and to what extent to open schools is a difficult decision for which there's no perfect answer. Health department recommendations are just that, they're recommendations, but they may not account for all the factors you must consider deciding whether to reopen your schools or what activities you'll allow. Your decision on how closely to follow a recommendation will not preclude music's coverage. So while we are covered, we could still be found liable. There was one in here that, um, that kind of caught my attention is that board members, school employees will have official immunity against claims provided they comply with applicable government orders. In other words, uh, if you have, you know, official immunity, you know, in the course of your duties, you can't be personally sued. But if you're not following these on purpose, there's a potential for you to be sued. So. Um, by not following the prevailing guidance from health officials, we are opening ourselves up to liability and I could not recommend that we diminish what we're doing now until we see some movement from health professionals. However, it's open for discussion and I've provided the information to you. Any discussion? I would provide a little bit of data. I, you know, it's the prevailing feeling of your faculty and staff, and they were really good to um, provide some survey data. I did not give that to you. I'll just give you a brief summary. Um, everybody's sick and tired of masks. Everybody's sick and tired of, of all the mitigation strategies. I think that's pretty much the prevailing opinion. Um, it is a little bit of concern to me that we still have a lot of uh, resistance, probably nationwide in some pockets, and we seem to be in one of those pockets. Um, probably about half, well, I know, about half of our staff do not intend to be vaccinated. Um, if you talk to medical health professionals, they're telling you if people will be vaccinated, and we've all been taking vaccinations since we were born, uh, for the most part, um, some more than others, if you served in the military, if you're in the healthcare profession, um, you have to make that personal choice. However, um, the prevailing wisdom is, is that you don't have any fertile ground for this any disease or any of these airborne viruses to go, then eventually you develop herd immunity and it doesn't have anywhere to go, so it just burns off and it's gone. Um, but right now, um, we, we still have some resistance for people to do that, so we're still gonna see some cases bouncing around is what's gonna happen. It's just gonna bounce around some more um, until we decide to do it. It doesn't help when you have like, I think it was 0.007% out of a million or so people had blood clots from the Johnson Johnson vaccine when really 
<clears throat> they said that it was less than what you would see in a, a population of about a million people. And how you know it's related, right? So there's a lot of things there. There's a lot to consider. It's new information all the time, guys. So if there's no discussion, I will move on. Um, I gave you a new sheet. That's kind of an improvement on how we can look at our budget a little better in one sheet. We get a lot of questions about, you know, what can we do with salary? What can we do? How much money do we have to work with? That budget update and cash flow sheet that you have on your, it's called the budget projection tool. Um, that will show you what's coming in and what the revenue source is and accounts for what could be used toward uh, potentially for paying people. And then down below, you can see in kind of the reddish brown boxes, it shows you salary all, what benefits are costing, purchase services, supplies, your total expenses. For the most part, what we're bringing in is almost flat. Um, if you look at what it says 2021, we're still receiving some money. So some of those are in gold and they, they say estimate. So we're still kind of taking in money as we're going through. And I'm just taking a basic estimate of what I believe it will be. Um, but as you go through that, you can see if you look back the past four years, um, it's, it's pretty flat on what it is. Um, if you look down at the bottom, we get asked a lot of times about what, what's in our operating budget that we have the most flexibility with. That's fund one. And that's what that percentage down there in blue all the way across. You see, we were uh, a few years ago, back in 17, 18, we were 34 percent and we're 30. We kind of gave some raises and we kind of pushed some money back into salaries and we were 31 and we hit about almost 31 again. So it's pretty balanced. And I'll make some recommendations later tonight um, on what we should where what direction we should be going with that. But um, the. The weird thing is you can see on 2021, I've got that bright green where it says COVID year. Okay, this is where a lot of things, I sat in a webinar today and I think I got three quarters of the way through it uh, before I had to start prepping for this meeting and kind of reviewing my notes. Um, and I still have some more I wanna go back and look at again. I'm um, getting a little legal advice on the side on what can we do, what can we not do. Everybody hears about all this federal money kind of being pushed into the system. We probably will need to have just a, a sit down <laughs> You, the board and I and just kind of look at what's possible, what's not possible, why, what those laws are, and that's just COVID money, and then looking at what we're doing with the budget overall, and I'd like to do that sometime in May. Um, it could be late May, like I'm thinking almost after graduation. Let me make sure I reach some critical mass on, I'm waiting for a few things to come back. Um, I want to go back and review that webinar some more and finish it out, make sure I got all the pieces of that. Um, if I hadn't had another meeting, I've already seen it, but still, takes processing time the same day you're like still looking at where you can put some things so there is some potential to do some things that we uh, probably one quote stood out is there is more money in education than anyone can remember and people have been in it for 30 years it's just it's very specific about what you can do what you can't do there's rules you're dealing with the feds there's an audit there's people that come in and look at your books they're gonna look at what you've done and have you done it properly you can see the local uh, town has about, uh, t city of Tipton has about $600,000. They're, they're in the same spot in some ways as the school is to say, now how do we use this money effectively to have an even better school, to mitigate the virus, to do things that make sense. So, so we'll have some decision making to make. And I'll try to give you some options. And if there's some new ideas out there, we can sit and say, well, what can we do this? I can probably answer most of that for you. But um, we are, we do not have any of this, money released to us yet as far as the CARES Act except for ESSER 1 which I believe is about $125,000. We use that mostly for summer school, for mitigation, for cleaning supplies, for uh, we went after uh, with um, um, county money, we went after the Chromebooks, more mitigation, masks, a whole list of things. There's a whole list and you guys have seen that if you've been on the board a little while just how we put that money to use and it was coming at us fast in a hurry. Thankfully for Montauk County, they were, they were good to actually manage that money for us and kind of work with us, take our applications, which we had to do several times, didn't we, Leslie? Yeah, and account for that. So, so that was the tougher one to chase, but Montauk County was good to work with and uh, Sarah Jones was good to work with too. Um, at any rate, and uh, that's your county treasurer. Bond work. All right. So 
the good news is our bond issue passed. Um, had it passed in the fall, we would be looking at putting new HVAC on the roof this summer. It takes time for procurement, but you know, at least we can aim, ready, fire, as opposed to, hey, it's fire, aim, are we ready? <laughs> so we, we could try to do a real fast solution and maybe get it right, or we can plan and make sure this solution that's supposed to last the next 20 years is correct and, and start working with GRP and getting the specifics down, getting the right equipment ready to go, getting the, they're, they're talking about helicopters actually coming in to pull all those off the roof. So it's, it's a lot of planning that has to be done. Um, the, uh, um, the smaller things, I was talking to GRP today and it looks like we will probably get the deadbolt locks in this summer. Um, they're looking at getting the vestibules done this summer. Um, some of the smaller pieces of it being done and probably most of it will be done in the summer and the fall, except for the HVAC. And that may be a little schwanangling, that's a, that's a technical term, schwanangling, uh, around um, next summer on how we do summer school, maybe what part of the building we can do summer school and when, because you got some electrical work, they got a little pre-electrical work to do to just get it and put it on. And um, we might be using half of a building at one point. I don't know exactly how it's gonna work and how many days they're gonna need, but it'll just be some planning on our part as we're working with them. And um, they are beginning, and that's on the agenda tonight too, to let them know to proceed with the uh, engineering design uh, that we intend to continue on with them and let them put that on the uh, uh, agenda. Um, I think that is it. Oh, just quick things. Went to the MASA conference last week. A lot of good information up there. We went to hit the legislative forum. I mentioned that. Uh, we rene renegotiated our contract with Marco and been working with the admin team. We're about finished with that. They're giving me some feedback on how can we can be even more centralized in our copying. And in sitting down with that representative, it looks like we can save $10,000 next year and reduce our copy costs by about 50%, which is really good. And I told her I wanted some savings and she found them. Um, communicating with our financial advisor, uh, he's collecting from uh, Leslie and I some information. And of course we have three counties to deal with. So getting those official results in, in our uh, bond advisor's hands and he'll probably be coming in and showing us what kind of rates we can expect. They're good right now. We kind of need to jump. And I told him, get moving before they start going up. There's some articles starting to starting to tick up out there in the financial world about rates are gonna rebound and start going back up interest-wise. So we don't wanna see that happen. So I told him to get to work the day after the bond, get going now. Um, so we want to get those favorable rates as much as we can. Um, that is uh, working with uh, Midwest Computech to make sure we have enough uh, Wi-Fi support. And I was working on a project with Ryan Keel out of Midwest, and we're probably gonna be adding some hubs and pieces inside our infrastructure of our interior Wi-Fi so that when the 500 Chromebooks will be here April 30th, I heard that today. So they're coming in the door um, that we ordered, and uh, those have been delayed for quite a while. The, uh, uh, we're also working with Audio Acoustics we're looking at to use a different grant, a couple different grants, small rural schools grants, to flesh out a broadcast room at the high school. And that broadcast room will basically be used for students to do their own storytelling, broadcasting about all things being uh, tipped in cardinals and actually punch some stuff out like Ashley's been good to do and some others have been good to do on Facebook. So that so much more capability now to talk about the good things going on in our school and make the invisible visible. With that, the end. Okay, uh, appreciate that. Building a minute. Um, go ahead and add $500 to the base. Um, based on what we're seeing on what payroll will be, we should have close to $60,000 um, back in the budget based on hires. You know, when you have several teachers retire, you're gonna see that because you see people start up at the beginning of the pay scale. So those are added up there for you on a spreadsheet if you wanna see them. Um, the cost of adding 500 to the base would be about $30,000. And then we would do a comparable increase for all uh, the staff um, as well. Where's so this sheet at? if you click that link. 
It says recommendation in letter B. What's yeah. that? I emailed it and I also linked it on your board agenda. Yeah. Yeah, I see the separate email. Yeah, I did them both. You slide over here, Craig. How does this ripple into, you know, next year as those steps go up, this ripples across the entire yeah, salary totally. schedule? The, the cost of it for next year would be about $30,000 to raise teacher base by $500. Now you're also going to have to do that for your support staff. You want to give them something comparable to that. Um, and we would basically figure out what that percentage was and then put it into their salary as well. And we would approve that next meeting? Yeah, I'd show you what that will be too. So that gives me a little bit of room to be able to do that uh, conservatively. Now you're going to get some people that go up a little higher on the salary schedule than you expect because they go and they do college hours. So instead of just jumping one step, they might jump two. That's usually a handful. We won't know that until August. So that gives me a little bit of room. I'd estimate that if we do that with support staff, it would cost 10 to 15,000. So then, then you're at 45,000, and then you're gonna have a few more people that move up because they go and get eight hours, 12 hours, wherever they are. And they might move themselves up because we have a salary schedule that if you add to your education, you're gonna go up a little faster, so. And as they move up next year, it goes up a mm -hmm. little more, that cost continues. Yeah, and that's why I think it's conservative not to just jump off and just take it all, all at once. Um, you've got a significant number of people who are retiring, and that makes some space in your salary schedule. So you're, it's like you're, you're cycling out the people who are high on the salary schedule, and now you're bringing in brand new people for the most part, and so they're starting off at their beginning of their career now. So I, I think it's sustainable. We have to watch it, um, but I don't think it overextends us. Remember, it's an estimation game. Discussion? Questions? I'm kind of curious if that was approved. Discussion? Questions? I'm kind of curious if that was approved, where that puts us with other schools not they're going through they're going through the same thing we're going through right now I don't know what their increases are going to be we're all kind of doing it at the same time I can imagine that all of them will increase and we share that information I've got another sheet on it to kind of show you where we are overall okay depends on who you compare yourself right. to with Stover no with Sedalia no with uh, California? No. With Smithton? Yes. <laughs> okay. With Colcam? Yes, for the most part. We're pretty competitive with them. Um, conference schools. Yeah, conference schools about our size with about our resources. Yes. But I, I just in talking with superintendents and, and people who are around our size, it's looking like everybody's looking for a way to do a pay increase this year. It's been a rough year. So um, I don't, here's my thing. I don't think it overextends us. You know, um, here's one of the things about ESSER funds that are coming up. We've kind of got a little bit of an insurance, okay? As we push these federal funds into the budget for allowable uses, like we just bought something we would normally have to buy with uh, operating funds. Okay, well, the hell, the hell there you go, right. So what I've been doing ever since ESSER funds came in is trying to hold on to our regular operating funds and make the claims on things that we would normally pay for but would qualify for those federal funds. So that kind of gives us a little bit of a cushion. And when we sit down and kind of have that budget meeting, I'll, I'll show you in more detail on what's allowable and what we can really do. Um, and we can do something possible even with the retention of staff. And that's something I'm researching today and the past week and looking at what what's allowable. There's a couple of ways that uh, I'm looking at through our legal, which is what Desi is telling us to do before you do anything with any kind of salaries or anything like that. 
um, with the federal funds, you're, you're going to have to get kind of a legal consult on that because nobody's really jumping on it quite yet. And the money's not even going to be released till near the end of May. It actually has to be approved by the legislator to be released to DESE for us to claim and signed by the governor. So that's, has, that hasn't even happened yet. So it's still working its way through. But there are some possibilities that I'll talk to you guys. Um, that's why I think we need to kind of have a, a meeting toward the end of May and kind of talk about these options and what's, what's the desire of the board. And I think I generally know what that's going to be. But we're, we're kind of waiting. It's kind of a waiting game right now. It's just dragging out week after week, waiting on the Fed to get more uh, advice. And even in the webinar, the parts I was able to watch today, they're still kind of, but, you know, be cautious, but be cautious, you know, so they're slowing people down a little bit. So everybody's kind of slowing down before they just plug Do it in. Do you feel like we can add this to the base and still keep our fund balances at a healthy level where yes. we currently at? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I think my concern is how competitive we are now. And if we don't make a move now, and everyone else does, it just yeah. the problem. We can end up last pretty quick. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Are we voting on this? Yeah. Okay, well, I'll make a motion to um, increase the base uh, by $500. And could you say in a comparable increase with the uh, support staff, and I'll show that to you next time, or you just want to actually see it? I would prefer to see that, that's just my opinion. Fine. Okay, got a motion by Bo, seconded by Jolene. All in favor to raising the base by $500. Motion carries. Question? You have a question. What's $1,000 doing? Double that. 60. 60,000. Token. Is that sustainable? Or are you pushing the if, if you're going with your support staff too, I, I, I'd say you're pushing a little hard on the pedal. I'd be a little more cautious about it. But I do have something I want to talk to you guys about in a finance meeting that might help with this. And I, I just don't want to address the support yeah. staff. I just would rather see. Yeah, that's okay. I'd hate to vote on something without having any numbers. Uh, well, no, you, well, that's fine. Yeah. It's, it, I'm trying to get it done. I, 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 want, I want to spread some positive cheer here. <laughs> I want to kind of get this moving. It wouldn't be that I wouldn't show it to you. It'd just be more of a, hey, I can look at the percentage that this is going to be, and I could add that same percentage to them. Plus, there's some more modification I think needs to be done because um, uh, minimum wage has changed. So that's that's changing. That you know we're going to need to get comparable, and I wrote that down, and I can't remember. Yeah. Minimum wage is now in 2022. It's going to 11.15, and then in 2023 it's going to 12 dollars. So I've got about four different scenario spreadsheets on how do we want to proceed on that. But if you tell me they went up this much, then I can go and try to be equitable and show We've you that. We've approved the support yeah. staff already. I think everybody in here agrees that the support staff would get similar compensation. We right. just want to see the That's numbers. Fine. I think no, the fine. staff is going to trust us to make the right yep. decision next month. Yeah. Yep, it's fine. We just need to, to see how it flushes out. All right, let's move on. Um, what else we got? GRP, am I jumping around here? Mm -hmm. I got two, you know, about four mm -hmm. things I'm looking at. Proceed, Yes, there's a letter of intent to proceed with design and engineering with GRP Wegman. They want to know we're on board, and um, we kind of had this before. They don't have any money tied to this. They just want to know that we're there. They are the guys and gals that are going to be, they're going to start their work and um, get going. Is this just like a standard letter from we found somewhere or something? Um, this is, let me go back to this because I was drafting this with them. Uh, a guarantee need energy savings has some specific language and laws tied with it, Craig. That's, it's pretty standard, yeah. 
Because the second paragraph from the bottom, I don't know if everybody's got it pulled up. Yeah. Substantially complete. Yeah. So define that. What's substantial? Well, they actually have a contract. In other words, they're going to put this on their timeline to get it right. done by then. So but we'll have them under contract that completion will be by, um, and our lawyer will go over that. It needs to be completed, yeah. not they're, What they're asking you basically is saying, hey, is it okay if we project this out, substantially complete it by 2022? Because the main issue here now is they want to be sure we're okay that the HVAC goes on next summer because it's going to take them a while to get all these designs and everything done a few months back we talked about giving them some money to start this engineering design and get it on the roof possibly in the summer but then we decided not to do that so now they just want to know hey are you okay with summer what's the bond window to spend the money five years it's five years from what i've said most will tell you three but you can do some paperwork and extend it out if you want to i i, I don't recommend that we go five years you know i i think we it's were a, kind of pushing it there when we got on there was still some bond money that yep. was right at the end yeah i i've been through a conference five, that said it, five, five is the max that you could do it's so. a pretty good question substantially complete is a subjective That's, yeah but i mean i think you could argue you know if someone doesn't Put a light fixture up and they're not yeah. complete that's kind of a superficial argument um, yeah. i think it's super i think it'd be my language I guess so because our argument's gonna be you got you and by the next summer you've got to have the major stuff done so, right but substantially complete i mean we don't want hvac guys electricians and they're working on school school, right no i would think that um that so, was it, did they run a night shift? Well, they're saying substantially complete by August 20, 2022. Yeah. So. Okay, so they start the, let's say they started this vestibule and your campus is tore up till August 20th, 2022. Well, they would have to do a project timeline, I would assume. Are they rolling out? It says substantially complete. I already have the, the draft project timeline. I haven't put it. I haven't gone, I've talked to them three times already, and the HVAC is the piece that they want to be sure that we're okay, that it's going on next summer, because that's what they can do and do well. Um, I, I can delete this substantially complete right there because they're on, and just give it to them and sign, hey, we intend to do this, and we'd I mean, like to understand the HVAC part of it. I just, I mean, think it gives them too much wiggle room. Yeah, I, I mean, I mean, Jigs has been on them too. Been on so many projects where substantially complete. Pardon me. Okay. So, whatever that percentage is, basically the conference, you know, the subs will come in, get whatever they have to get done to be substantially complete. And then the next thing you know, if there was 25 masons, now there's five. If there was 50 electricians, now there's six. Because they've got other projects they've got to get done, right? So they start cutting back. But, I mean, obviously, the district's going to hold on to that final payment until they're done. It just drags everything out. So, but this isn't the contract. No. No, so this is just our commitment to them. So I think. So we intend to use them, and we're okay with. But I think, I mean, uh, yeah. I would think our, your word would account for that, and they're going to present us with a project yep. scope, timeline, agreement, and we're going to sign off on And the lawyers that. are going to, so our lawyers are going to review it. I mean, I don't know why you can't bump them an email and say, hey, let's get going. Yeah. I have. Well, yeah. you've so checked what do with, they um, need? I mean, you've checked with other schools, too, I know. And they have done fine work and on time. We've got a whole yeah. list, whole set of resumes from, yeah. and I've called five superintendents. Two point five million dollar bond, or a, not even that. Yeah, this is two point five million, like a Snickers bar. I know the stuff they do. I think in our contract, I mean, we would want to. Um, you could even look at putting two dates down. 
you know, something that says substantially complete, which we capture. I, I, to me, that would mean that we've got the bulk of work done. I mean, almost all of it. Um, and then have a drop dead date that extends a little bit beyond that. And we felt like we had to have that. I mean, you, this is a letter of intent that we're going to do business with them. Yep. So take, and it's drafted by us, so take that part out. Tell them we're going to do business with them. Yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm going to delete it right now. <laughs> there you go. Yep. Done. <laughs> yep. And then, yep. then we let them. See, they're going to start investing a lot of time and money, guys, and putting people on it. Yeah, but they're going to drive the bus on that when yep. we have a project. I mean, we're saying here's the scope, here's the timeline, here's yep. your first bill. Right. You know, and yep. here's how much, you know, we're going to knock out, and then we're going to knock this out. Yep. On the big on the big stuff. I've already got the spreadsheet on it they sent to me today. Yeah, I mean, I think we, we're all in agreement that they're okay. moving. They just got to get us all their paperwork, right? Yep. Is the issue and it has to be approval. reviewed by our lawyer. Yeah. yeah. Can, I, can I ask about the timeline again, though? Because we yep. talked about this, like, like you said, a couple months ago. Um, and is the issue about the summer of the HVAC the design problem, or is it a... Um, getting in the equipment and fitting it into a schedule both. issue? Both. They have committed the people to create those designs and plans and put it to paper. They know what they need, but they have to have, what does Craig always say, they have to have plans that have to be signed off on. So yeah. we were struggling with passing a bond issue, so they're like, okay, I can't put 100 man hours into this or whatever it takes. That makes and then sense. That, yeah. that, that's why they tried to get us to sign on and say, hey, we put some skin in the game because we're going to pay some people to get on your project, and if it fails again, we're left holding the bag, you know. Yeah. So that now they don't even want any money; they just want to know, hey, you're you're intending to use your bond money for us, right? <laughs> That's what they're asking. I think this yeah. letter addresses that without the substantial statement. Fine. All right, I'll make a motion that we enter into a letter of intent with GRP Wegman. Second. Second by Patsy. All in favor. Motion carries. Unanimous. All right. Leslie, I'm printing that over there at the printer and just have uh, Clint sign that before we roll out of here tonight. We going in the executive now? That looks like you got another one here, kiddo. What I what am I missing? D. Mom. Yep. D. D. The gym floor. Oh, gym floor. Charles Lubert Art Blues. So Dean left. These guys have done our hardwoods since I've been on the board. Since I've been here. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. I do have a question about that. Is there a limit to how many times we can do this, or is it? Um, am I wrong about that? No, you're right. No, there's a limit. Four. Yeah. We're getting close to that. I was going to. Because whenever we got, whenever we had the last uh, bond that we did, we did the four. They said anywhere between. Five, six, you can push it out seven years before you actually you finish it. Yeah. And then your second finish, which will be this upcoming finish that we do, if it's next summer or the summer after that, whenever we decide, then that one's supposed to last 10 years. The second one's supposed to last longer than the first. So we actually talked about that today. You want to share with them just kind of what you're seeing as far as gym wear goes and possibly revisiting it in, the, in yeah. December? Yeah. Our biggest issue that we have is the floor becomes very slick um, November, uh, which is also when basketball season starts. And the only time that you really have good traction is whenever they run the Zamboni over it. And it's good for that day. And it's good for that day only. Um, last year, I pushed the refinish date back into the end of July. So at least the fall could be good. And we did the same thing this year, so it'd be the last week of July. Um, and we also talked with them, they're going to get us a date on trying to do a uh, quick finish on Christmas, somewhere right around Christmas, so we can have the floor again right there. It won't be the same as uh, the one they do in July, that one's a 10-day downtime. They said they have a quicker one where they can just kind of do like a deep scrub, um, quick finish. It's like a three or four day downtime um, to, to try and help with that. So when we talk about doing it the second time, we talk about sanding. sanding Just like this, this, not really a sand sand, more like a scrub. I mean, it takes off some of that top, but it's not really mm -hmm. like a sand sand. 
it's like polish. But it's more, it's more of a polish. Uh, no, I, I guess what I'm asking is the, the one that's supposed to last is 10 years. That one would be a sand down. Yeah, that sand down the hardwood, yeah, where you would repaint. And if you look at the floor closely, you, you'll you notice a lot of spots that, uh, well, not a lot of spots, you'll notice several spots where the uh, paint on there has started to wear off in, in different locations. And I've really noticed over the years the stain um, inside the three-point line where we have that two-tone. It's starting to fade in some areas, and some areas it's darkening up. So, you know, it's, and, it, and it gets so uh, much use, guys. We're talking about all summer long. It's TRA. It's it's PE classes. It's graduation. It's just constantly used. So we might actually be looking at doing kind of some upkeep in the in the fall as much as it gets used. So what's it's a good the, thing. We use it. What's the ballpark on the second? On the sand and refinish, I have no idea. We just talked about it today, so it might be. Oh, you talked about just total redo it. Oh, I don't know. Last time we got done was Bond with Jarvis, yeah, I, correct? Yeah, but then you had all new four too, so yeah, it's all <coughs> part of the package. <coughs> I mean, because yeah. I would it guess, is, I would guess it'd be yeah. more towards like ten. Would be my guess. How long ago was that? It's a rough guess. I wouldn't want to do it. Twenty fifteen. <laughs> They were finishing the punch list whenever I came on. Okay. Thanks, Coach. Okay. Any discussion on the labor bed this season? No, I'll make a motion to accept the first bid and figure the high school gym floor and elementary school floor. $4,650. Motion by Craig. Second by. Second by Ashley. All in favor? Motion carries. Seven. All right. We'll move into closed session. Um, and Craig, you want to take that over and you'll need item six too and you'll need to call in uh, administrators. Um, yeah. <laughs> All of them. All right, make a motion to move into closed session in compliance with 610.021. To discuss bullet points one, two, three, and six to include the Board of Education and Dr. Cloud. Do you need all three administrators? Yes, because we've got Mr. hires Cole, on there if you have any questions. Better, Cole Pepper, what about Ms. Nancy? Uh, Nancy? Are you doing non-certified? You, you don't. Yeah, you got non-certifieds on there, yeah. So, yes. Did I put non-certified on there? I Nancy. thought you did. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was ready. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you were ready to go. Oh, no. There it is, right there. Sorry. And Lanny Lucas. Classified okay. stuff. Okay. I was like, I don't see non-certified. Uh, I got a motion by Craig. <laughs> Second by Bo, Craig. Yes. Patsy. Yes. Ashley. Yes. Aaron. Yes. Bo. Yes. Jolene. Yes. And me, yes. For an executive session. All right. Thank you. Thank you.